I'm basically documenting this story just in case something happens to me as a result of the information that I found out about this man named Jason Lawrence and also to bring awareness of the dangerous games that men play. It all started when I left my domestic violence relationship that I was in for seven long years. In that seven year period, I had experienced a brain injury. I had been choked multiple times. I had bone fractures. Um, it just got to a point to where I was tired of living in fear. I was tired of fighting and being toxic and getting back together. I was tired of it for not only me, but for my children. In spite of them never really seeing us fight. However, I was just tired. I was tired of being in fear of him being upset on a Tuesday and deciding to break the TV, punch holes in the wall. I was tired of constantly having to move because of us fighting. I was tired. I was tired, y'all. Um, it got to a point to where I couldn't take it anymore and I packed up me and my children, found us a three bedroom house and I moved. I moved. Um, I got custody orders in place and uh, making me the sole provider of the children, giving him visitation rights and he was not satisfied with that at all. He was absolutely not satisfied with that. He made it hard for me to live in peace. I say that because he will pop up at my house unannounced, kicking in my door um just to walk in and destroy my property things that i had bought for my house destroyed within seconds because he knew he could i would call the police and he would say certain things using wordplay to manipulate the system into making it believe that it was a civil situation and not criminal to where they would never arrest him it was frustrating it was upsetting he wrecked into one of my cars like it was just too much too much it got to a point to where i had to continuously call the police because he was a consistent problem a consistent problem cps eventually got involved and removed my children because of all of this I was devastated, but this is exactly what he wanted. He wanted to hurt me. He wanted to hurt me by causing so many problems that they would remove my children. He told me that to my face. He told me that to my face. Um, after them removing my children, he ended up trying to unalive me. And at that moment, I knew that we could never coexist together. I put him in jail. I pursued charges and he is right now as we speak waiting to be transferred to prison. In the meantime, I'm left with fighting the system for my children. I have done everything that I could possibly do to get them back. However, it's still a process. So, you know, at the time that I met Jason, I had went through so much. I was going through a state of depression. It was times to where I didn't even want to get up, get up out of bed. It was times to where I would lay down in the same spot for months, not even wanting to get up and brush my teeth, not even wanting to get up and eat and feed myself, take a bath, just genuinely take care of me. It was hard to participate in life because I was so depressed because I love my children. And it was hard for me to live without them. It was hard for me to be in an empty house without hearing my children call my name. It got to a point where my siblings were encouraging me to um, get back to loving myself, you know. Um, I got to a point to where I wasn't as attractive as I could be um, because I wasn't taking care of myself. And they were just like, you know, girl, do your hair. Put your makeup on. Remind you, remind yourself that you are 
that girl you know and that's what i did um i started getting on dating sites not with the intent to actually start dating but honestly just to have that communication with other people because mind you i was staying in the house all day i wasn't talking to nobody um except for family occasionally so that human communication and socializing for me it really gave me a peace of mind going out on dates with people and going out to eat and getting myself back out there having a social life because i did at a point in time develop ptsd and social anxiety so you know me being able to interact with humans and adults um that really brought a lot of a lot of light into my life um i started dating you know lawyers and a lot of guys in law enforcement dating not having sex and um you know being a, a victim of domestic violence it's kind of natural for you to gravitate to someone in law enforcement because what they're supposed to do protect and serve right so automatically um because i had ptsd and social anxiety it was hard for me to actually get to the point of meeting someone um in person from offline so i really had to be careful and pick and choose who i wanted to meet up with but being in law enforcement it just made it that much easier for me to you know meet up with guys so one particular guy jason lawrence he was employed at dallas county jail as a deputy and you know when we exchanged numbers our first conversation just to check the chemistry it was on point i'm not gonna lie um first conversation lasted maybe over eight hours okay it lasted for over eight hours um majority of the time we was laughing i'm very funny so you know there was a lot of jokes it was just very healthy for me to exchange positive energy like that you know people don't understand what a good laugh could do to a person that was going through a state of depression um in every conversation that we had after that that's exactly how it was for us so you know eventually um after talking on the phone um getting to know each other um exchanging personal information you know he told me he was single he owned a few properties he was a single father of two children um one of the mothers lived out of state um and that he was just basically a hard-working black man you know trying to build himself up and he was pursuing a relationship and looking for someone to pursue a relationship with that he can eventually get married to so you know the chemistry was there like i said and when we ended up meeting um we was both just caught in a moment and we ended up having sex and um we was very irresponsible we had unprotective sex and like i said just caught up in a moment so um immediately afterwards i was like you know dang you know um you think i should take a plan b pill and he was like nah you you good you know i'm thinking that meant that you know you didn't do anything inside of me so i'm good right that was not the case i had to take a, a, a sip of my good old tea so um part two like i was saying uh at this time you know we had been spending quality time together um i had been coming to the condo frequently multiple times a week um sometimes i bring breakfast we'll eat breakfast together sometimes we'll just cuddle um lay down together naked you know um holding each other um watching movies you know little shows that he liked just spending quality time just talking having conversations laughing with each other just getting to know each other more um, so we had been talking for a couple of months at this time. Um, <clears throat> and I had already found out that I was pregnant. It took me about two, a little over two weeks to find out that I was pregnant after the first time that we had sex. Okay. So after the first time that we had sex, which after the first time we did have sex multiple times after that, um, we literally had sex the next day um i want to say three or four times that week 
So two two and a half weeks, I would say later, uh, me and my sister's nail was joking on the phone. And uh, they was talking about, you know, because they heard all this good stuff about him. Like, oh, girl, what if you end up getting pregnant? And, you know, me being me, the lifestyle that I've come from, you know, I've been a bad girl in my day. So it's just kind of ironic for me to be messing with somebody in law enforcement. It kind of just makes me feel like I'm doing something naughty, like a fantasy or something. So, um, you know, it was comical just to, you know, think that what if I did end up getting pregnant? about him and me and my siblings we joked about it and um i don't know like something just told me to just go take a pregnancy test and i did and it came back positive um i started freaking out i started hyperventilating i started panicking i done fell out on the floor oh my god what am i gonna do i'm gonna be fat again oh my god I'm already 170. I'm going to be 200 pounds. Like, you know, I'm freaking out because my last pregnancy, I literally almost lost my life. Um, I had really bad preeclampsia. I never carry my kids full term. Like, um, I'm always having to induce my labor. Like, it's always something going on with my health, with my placenta to where I can't carry full term. And I just didn't want to experience any of that anymore. I just didn't want to go through it. So, honestly, when I first found out, I was just like, oh, my God. Like, oh, my God. How did this happen to me? You know? And um, I told him he was shocked. But it was not like, oh, my God, is it mine? It wasn't like that because he knew what he did. He knew what he did. He knew that he ejaculated inside of me. He knew that. I didn't know. But he knew. He just didn't think I was going to get pregnant that fast. Um, so it wasn't like for him, like, am I the daddy? It wasn't a question like that. It was more so, you know, dang, it happened so fast. You know, that was where his mom was at was like, dang, I can't believe you got pregnant so fast. You're super fertile. Um, so, you know, after finding out I was pregnant, of course, he told me he wanted to keep the baby this is what he told me that he wanted to keep the baby um you can even see in one of the text messages that i posted he asked if he could name the babies because at first i was pregnant with twins before i ended up miscarrying one so he wanted to have the honor of naming the children so you know at this time you know he's telling me not to overwork myself that i needed to not do xyz because he wanted to make sure that i carry full term and that i have healthy babies like, he's acting like a concerned, you know, soon-to-be parent. Um, ensuring me that he's going to be here for me no matter what throughout my pregnancy. When a child is born, he's going to be, when the kids are born, he's going to, be, you know, be there to financially support. So, you know, at this time, we are still, you know, continuing um, our relationship, being exclusive. Um... It just seemed like we just got so close, y'all. Like, it was so strange. It was like the connection was just so authentic that it was like we, when we talked, it just felt like we knew each other for years. Like, the chemistry was just so strong. And I got messages that I can post too where he was saying that himself. He was just like, everything is just so perfect between us. It's perfect. I hope it stay like this forever. Um, you know, and I don't know, guys, like you always have that one friend that brings you back down to reality. And of course, you know, I like to surround myself with um males. Uh, I don't really have a lot of female friends. I don't have friends at all, to be honest. Um, All I have is family members. But I did have this one guy that, you know, I would talk to every now and then. Um, we have been friends for, uh, quite some time, but I wouldn't really call him a friend. Cause baby, he just, you know, he just somebody that you call, express yourself to y'all talk. And then y'all might not talk for the rest of the year type of thing. But I end up calling him and letting him know the situation and trying to see what he thought about it. And he was just like, man, I think that, um, he may not be who he say he is. Like, I think that you're just super excited 
because you just got out of a seven-year relationship so therefore the first person that you get with that sound like he may be somebody um you're holding on to that and you're pumping him up like he is just the best thing in the world and um i want you to actually take a step back and look at all these red flags that you are refusing to acknowledge and um you know just Start listening and paying attention to things instead of Shoot, being in a moment and floating flag. on clouds, you know. So that's what I did. I um told myself I wasn't going to be that toxic per person to look for my ex inside of the next person that I talked to. But, you know, I took it upon myself to um, go back on the dating site that we met, met on. And um, <clears throat> when we first, you know, started really talking like I... It was no problem for me to delete my page. He said he was going to delete his. You know, I never really pushed the issue because I feel like, okay, if he want to delete it, he going to delete it. If he don't, whoop de doo But at this point, I'm pregnant. So, so, I'm asking if he ever deleted it. He said, yeah, I'm taking his word for it. But I go on there and I make a fake page and I do my due diligence to investigate and come to find out he was talking to other people he was actually talking to my fake page not knowing he was talking to my fake page and the stuff that he was saying i was just blown away like i really found out that he was a liar a manipulator a narcissist like he was playing a dirty and dangerous game like he was literally talking to the fake page that i'm behind telling me that you know just playing this role like oh i am a, a innocent strong black single father who just keep running into women who just want to use me and take advantage of me and i did meet somebody offline but she was playing with me you know and and she really didn't want me and just just really selling the story okay um i did confront him he wrote me a long paragraph about how you know that really wasn't him and how could I want to end what we got behind that? And how can I consider killing his baby? You know, um, terminating the, the, the pregnancy based off of, you know, what I figured out. And, you know, he just couldn't believe that I was that upset to want to go to that level. And I kept explaining to him, like, if you will lie about something like that, then that lets me know that you are a liar. And I don't want to deal with another man that has issues with telling me the truth if you would lie to me about something like that and i thought we was better than that to be honest i thought we was way better than that we had our relationship was so cool you know what i'm saying like i thought because i was so honest that i mean come on now really like we was better than that so i stopped talking to him or whatever um end up finding out that the baby had down syndrome that's one of the uh documents that you see down there and then you see a picture of me you see a picture of him um and this is what i was looking like when i was going over there seeing him because you know when you get new men honey you want to you know what i'm saying do yourself up and uh i don't know it was just something that was eating at me and this is when the story about to start getting good some was just eating at me i just could not let it go because i just felt like he just switched up once he realized that I caught on to him lying. It was like he really started turning cold towards me. Like how dare you figure it out. How dare you confront me about lying and talking to other people. While you pregnant. And we supposed to have something exclusive and building a relationship. To get to hopefully marriage in the future. And I went and I started looking up his name and the system. Which I've done before and I couldn't find nothing y'all. And I'm very good at what I do. I couldn't find nothing. I couldn't find nothing last time. Until I got smart. And I decided that instead of typing in Jason Lawrence. That I was going to type in Lawrence. On the Facebook search bar. Okay. And I put on the filter where he worked at. Just to see if I could find something. You know. To narrow it down. And a name popped up. Joseph Lawrence. Like I said. Just as long. I escaped a domestic violence relationship. Okay. Um, ended up losing my kids. You know. Getting out of that situation. Trying to move forward. And build a safe 
life and environment for me and my children. Wasn't even thinking about being in a new relationship or starting a new relationship or even considering having one with anybody. My main focus was my children. So when they were taken away, you know, that depression consumed me to the point to where I didn't even want to get up out of bed. Didn't even want to participate in life. Um, I was at a very, 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 very low point in my life. So when my siblings was encouraging me to get back out there, put some makeup on, girl, get yourself together, start living life a little bit, you know, take a step out of that depressional state of being and live and know that it's okay for you to be happy even though you have this and that going on it's okay so i ended up meeting jason and um he did that for me he took me out of that depression um for me to be honest it wasn't a fact of oh i loved him oh i was falling in love with that wasn't it for me it was more so the bond the communication that we had like the chemistry was just so you know it was so good between us like i just really felt like i was in a relationship with my best friend like that's why when i caught on to stuff that he was lying to me about you know it wasn't the fact that he was out here talking to other people it was the fact that dang i thought we was cool than that like i have a really cool personality y'all so when we talking so when we talking um i just felt like you know we was in a good space to to be honest with each other so you know that is really what hurt me because i was so open and honest with him he knew about my kids my domestic vi violence relationship he knew about everything that i went to jail for like he knew everything about me so i just thought that we had that type of respect for each other that i mean it is what it is we gonna keep it real and that's not how it was for him he felt the need to lie um and got angry when i figured out that he was lying and uh you know afterwards um communicating with him in reference to the baby he just started acting like real cold like i did something you know um even in one of his text messages he was like yeah you don't want me anyways and da -da -da -da. like he was just acting like i did him wrong talking about uh, i was nothing but good to you i was there for you and all of this and i'm like yo like you was talking to other people we we have an unprotected sex we got a baby on the way and you don't even have enough class okay to delete your page baby you could have deviated to a whole nother dating site okay if you want to keep it a bing you could have went to a whole nother dating site not only is you gonna stay on the same one that we met on but you're gonna continue to talk to people up on there to where i can hop back on there and see your raggedy self like come on let's keep it a bing like bruh like what are you doing you have a baby on the way and hello my baby daddy is online talking to all these other women you know what i'm saying how am i supposed to feel you know like i'm it's just too much for me especially being pregnant having these emotions like it's just too much for me so like i said afterwards you know like i just stopped talking to him like i was just so upset like he just could not keep it real with me and um it was just eating at me like i just couldn't real i couldn't understand what did i do you know to make him feel like um i was nothing but good to you and da, 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 da. and i had to you know ask myself like dang like was it really me like did i really do something like you know like question myself and i just told myself like you know it got to be something more to it like i just don't believe that that's it like if he would lie about something like that i wonder what else he lied about so boom back to me researching him wow. i had looked him up before i couldn't find nothing jason lawrence couldn't find it nowhere in the system not a social media page not nothing in google nothing i'm very good at what i do so this is kind of you know this is not normal so uh i told myself i said okay let's be a little bit more smarter okay we don't watch catfish last night let's just you know step our game up okay so i go to facebook and instead of typing in Jason Lawrence, I type in Lawrence. Okay, let's narrow it down. Let's narrow it down. Then I go to, you know, work, to the work filter, and I type in where he worked at. Dallas County. 
jail. Okay, let's type that up in there. And what pops up? Joseph Lawrence. I'm like, okay. I wonder if this is him. Now, I knew it was him because it said Superman in parentheses right next to his name. And when I say he had an obsession with superheroes, baby, every time I came to see him, he had on a Superman shirt. Like, really? Really? Got us up there watching Superman sitcoms and stuff together. <laughs> so, I knew it was him. And I just said to myself, well, if he'll lie about his name. You better be ready and prepared because when you click on his page, you're going to find out some stuff. Now, mind you, he told me he was a single parent of two children. One of the mothers lived of his children lived out of the state. Hard working man. He owned a few properties, you know. All of that changed. 38 years old. Jason Lawrence, right? All of that changed when I clicked on his profile on Facebook I found out within what five minutes that his name was not Jason it was Joseph I found out that he was not 38 he was 44 <laughs> I found out that he was not a single father of two children that he actually had about six the youngest was like two or three just had a baby not too long ago you know, um, and not only that, but he had been married to a beautiful woman um, since 2008. So the fact that you are on a dating site portraying yourself to be a single man looking for a specifically a black woman. Um, when you have this, you know. The woman that he's that he's married to is not even black. So it kind of threw me for a loop because it's like, okay, you know, I guess she, I don't even know what color she is. You know, she kind of look like mulatto. You know what I'm saying? Um, She's very, very bright skinned. She's beautiful. But you online looking for specifically black women, um, trying to be in a relationship, saying that you're single. Um, Then I found out that you don't own the two properties that you claim you did. Um, you don't live this lifestyle that you try to portray to me. You actually live in a trailer home with y'all six kids and your wife. But somehow, some way, you was able to rent out an Airbnb at a nice high-rise condominium multiple times a week just to see me. Damn. <laughs> okay <laughs> when i say bamboozle y'all i reached out to his wife i haven't heard a response back because she hasn't seen my message um his sister did call me and reach out to me they all work at the same place um and it seems to me that she wants to keep the yeah, information okay. within their side of the family um she did say she was gonna have him call me but like i told him i got like i told her i got his number he got my number. I don't have no reason to want to talk to him. If I want to talk to him, I can call him. We got the same. We got contact information for each other. It's not hard for me to pick up the phone and call this man. I don't want to talk to him. I want to talk to his wife to let her know what type of man she got. Oh, she knows. Because I don't been in her shoes before. Thinking your man is going to work when he really going to work online talking to women and then having sex with them before he come home and lay down with you got his mouth on other women and coming home and putting his lips on you and y'all kids talk about disrespect mm. wow when i say job well done he played the game very well mm. i would have never thought that him out of all people looking the way that he looked that he was that type of guy but obviously he is so now I'm 14 weeks pregnant. Well, we'll be 14 weeks pregnant on Sunday. Um, found out my baby have Down syndrome. I'm going through this by myself. Had twins in the beginning. Lost one. Grieved and went through that by myself. But it's okay, though. It, it's okay. I'm a big girl. I'm going to get through it. Um, I'm just really astonished because I didn't think that he was that type of person. But to lie about your age, buddy. 
you got issues to lie about the six kids you got saying you only got two wow <laughs> the shenanigans you deserve an award but i would definitely keep y'all updated in case you know she takes me back but um i'm definitely going to expose him to his wife um hopefully this does not turn into a fatal attraction situation because i don't know what he might do to retaliate i don't know if she might pop off on him but uh at least my videos are documented just in case something happened to me and they can just go back and see what the real story was behind the situation all right Joseph but uh Morris. the lesson of today is it don't matter what profession they is it don't matter if you're a doctor lawyer preacher pastor they it does not cheap. matter what age he is they all play the same <laughs> game and to think that all of this was over sex just to be able to have sex with somebody you did all of this for sex i'm speechless i am speechless he played a dangerous game girl you ain't speechless at he all he played you a very dangerous 32 game. minutes and now you have two beautiful women who are both victims to a game that this man created all to get sex from women crazy isn't it dating is such a dangerous game right now and i just want everybody to be safe what to do everyday people man it's your boy pj today we back with another lit video we back in the confessional yes we stay in lit big dog man shout out to my everyday people who rock with me every day shout out to my homeboy lucky wheels and deals you know he keeps it lit make sure you guys like comment and subscribe to this video and let me know what y'all think about it in the comment section make sure y'all click the link below we got the opulent sense okay get that everyday pj it's an everyday thing that was that one we stay lit big dog okay all right man so yeah 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 you heard one you heard them all no matter if he a doctor, a lawyer, a police officer, a deputy at the jail. You know who be cheating the most? Police officers. I've heard so many stories with police officers cheat. Because they can go in and come out. I got to work overtime, baby. Or I got to work nights. I got to do this. They be out cheating. They be out sleeping with women. They pulling over. They be out on dating sites. And... and, and and this is the second story with a man named Jason, who's just a liar and a cheater, a deceiver, a heartbreaker. Anyway, she said I was lost for words. No, the hell you not. This was the, I was like, okay, we're going to get a story time, quick little story time. No. The first one was like seven minutes. The next one was like 11, then 12. I was like, girl, wrap it up. You know what I'm saying? This 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 story could have been in, in one 10 minute video. <laughs> it could have been one 10 minute video, sister. But anyway, you got your story out there. You had to she had to put it out there so uh you know for her safety because she knew something was going on. You 14 weeks pregnant by a married man. He putting his lips on you, on your lips, both of them. Then going home kissing his wife and kids. That's crazy to think about. This gave me anxiety. I wouldn't know nothing about none of this cheating. Now I'm not a cheater. I am a, a one woman man. Um, but uh, yeah, you know, we've seen this story over and over and over countless times of what men do and when women talk about oh. He lied about his name. He lied about his age. He lied how many kids he had. He lied about where he lived. He lied about what he owned. He lied about what he drived. He lied about his job. He lied about uh, his hairline. You know, he lied about everything. But I wonder if she was an open book to him. and she, I think she was so vulnerable that he would listen to it. She felt so open to tell him her whole story. Because she got two kids that's taken by CPS. She got stories 
on her YouTube channel. You can check it out on YouTube, Instagram, uh, TikTok, Big Bag Isha. With the, that's Big Bag, not Big Bag, Big Bag with two G's, Isha, E-S-H-A-A. But she got a nice little story on there and where you can find this and others. Um, I don't like women with tat chest on chest tattoos. It, they never look good. I mean, I don't, don't dislike them. I'm just getting to the point where I'm like, damn, you made a bad decision when you was younger. <laughs> it might have looked sexy when you was 20, girl, but now you're 40. All right, but we ain't here to judge because I was just, I ain't going to tell y'all what I was looking at. But, okay. Um, so, how she got preg pregnant by a married man. Listen, this is why I don't do dating sites. I don't do dating sites because you can't focus on one person. Like, if I meet a person, whether it be online, through a social media account, or whether it be in real life, I've tried to meet women in real life. Actually, I did. And, you know, I was going out there for over and over and over, meeting up with this person. and um, But we was meeting out where it wouldn't be, you know, such an inconvenience for either either one of us. And then when I started meeting her out, like we're going out and doing stuff, that's when I realized, nah, I ain't into this lady as I thought I would. She's a beautiful woman, but I ain't into her like I thought I would be. And then, cause you get to know people and see that's the good thing about dating and meeting people like out there or not on a dating website because you can you can kind of fill them out a little bit more. When you're on a dating website, that person could be telling you a whole lot, which I'd rather not be told the truth. I don't want to hear a whole bio, but read a bio. I'm single with five kids, and I'm, out of, I'm recently divorced, and I don't want to know all that from your bio. I want to meet you in person and learn all that information. And then, you know, if we don't get too serious, then, you know, cutting it off wouldn't be too much. Um, and then also, like, if you have sex on the first time, it's a nine, to nine out of ten possibility you getting cut off anyway. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> well, how many other people you meet on this dating site and sleep with on the first night? Mm -mm. No. You couldn't even make a brother wait. That means you you either getting it all the time or you haven't getting it all the time. But other than that, sleeping with you on the first night after we met on a dating site is nasty work. Unprotected too. Mm. Yeah, sister, you was just asking for it. But we know, as the women say, the man's a liar and a manipulator. But we just going to have to hold that. It's always us. It's nine times out of ten, it is always us. But um, I, I wonder if guys will ever come out and tell their story about how they woman lied about this and lied about that. I don't think you'll never see a story with a man talk. Well, you may, you might. See, every story I see with a man talking, he up here defending himself from some stuff a woman that said online about him. You know what I'm saying? It ain't never the man just coming with some breaking tea. Like, hey, yes, watch out for this girl because she did this. She scammed me. She took my money. Well, every time it's a woman, they not they lying about either they stealing or they not telling you if they married because they don't be married. If they tell you they not married, they not married. If they tell you they married, they will tell you they married. You know what I mean? Girl, women don't lie about that type of stuff. They'll... They'll go into a whole nother relationship. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, they'll tell you they baby daddy crazy. He do this, he do that. Same time, they be over there calling his phone all hours of the night, showing up to his house, showing up to his job. You know, they don't tell you all that stuff. So that's why guys, if a guy was to tell you, like, man, she was doing this, she was doing that, this and that. Yeah, it wouldn't be. It wouldn't be that she was a liar, lied about her family, lied about where she lived. You know, if a, if you find, if you telling something on a woman, you telling some, you know, some stuff you overlooked. You you saw it, but you just didn't care. 
Okay? And then the only reason why you tell them this is because she didn't got online and put your business out there. That's it. Everyday people, let me know what y'all think about this long, drawn-out story in the comment section. Make sure you guys like, comment, and subscribe. I'm going to holler at you later. Peace.